Hi, welcome back to Beautifully Bookish Bethany, where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing ways that you can use your money, your time, and your voice to stand up against racism, injustice, and police brutality, because black lives do matter. If you aren't familiar with what's been happening recently, and I don't know how you wouldn't be because it is everywhere, but the murder of a black man in America named George Floyd at the hands of police officers has set off weeks of protests and calls for change and has then led to many, many, many videos of further police brutality, a lot of political questions. And I think it is tragic that it has taken the death of this man and the violence of police against all of these people caught finally on cell phones, because you know this was going on before there were cell phones, but that it's taken this for people to finally stand up and say this is wrong we need to do something we need to bring change and i really hope that we will see that change happen now i am a booktuber so my content is primarily focused on books and so that is a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today but some of it is a little bit more political. I want to share with you a number of ways that you can practically work against racism, against police brutality, and work to see change in yourself, in your community, and in the world around you. And this doesn't all require money. Some of this is how you spend your money, whether you have a lot of money or a little bit of money. These are all things worth talking about. But it's also about using your voice. It's about using your time and you don't have to have a large platform for these things. So I have things split up into these three categories and hopefully you will take something away from this of things that you can do practically speaking in your everyday life beyond just retweeting stuff, which is great, but it takes more than that and it's not something that changes overnight. So with that said, let's start with your money. Where we spend our dollars matters. And this is something that I am personally working to grow in even more than I had previously. Starting with books. One thing you can do that I've been doing is buy from black owned bookstores and bookish small businesses. I will leave some links down below to places that you can find those or different people you might want to support. I have been buying books from The Lit Bar, which is a indie bookstore. It's the only bookstore that is currently serving the Bronx. And as a New Yorker, that is one that I'm supporting. You can order from them online. You're supporting an indie bookstore. You are supporting black businesses and you're putting your money where you say that your value is. Yes, I know it's a little bit more expensive. Yeah, maybe you can't buy as many books, but this is what I'm moving towards. I am trying to spend a lot less money buying books on Amazon. I am not spending any more money on a book outlet. And if you haven't seen my, <laughs> my live stream on that, I will link it up above. It's like now one of the most watched videos on my little channel. So that is wild. There are also some black creators in our community who are selling bookish candles, who are selling other book related things or have their own small businesses. I will again link some of those people down below if you want to go and support them financially. This is one way to do it. The other side of this is choose not to buy from businesses who are showing themselves to be racist or showing themselves to not care about race or diversity. And Book Outlet is one example, but there are plenty of others. So do some research. There are people who are standing up for what's right and there are people who aren't and you can speak with your dollars, speak with where you spend your money. Even if it's not a lot of money, it makes a difference. Another thing you can do is when you're buying books, buy books by black authors and other people of color authors. And then we'll get to this, but read and review them is the next step. You know, there are many books out there for you to buy and there are some really, really great books by black authors and in all the different genres. So no matter what your genre of choice is, there are some books that you can check out that you will probably enjoy. And if you read a bunch of them, yeah, you're not going to like all of them, but you're going to find some that you really, really love because that's just what happens when you integrate that into your regular daily life. Even make a goal for yourself, even if it's small and you don't read a lot, like say every month, I'm going to include a book by a black author and be intentional about the books you're choosing to read, which again, <laughs> more on that. The other thing you can do is donate to organizations who are doing work in this. Donate to community bail funds. It helps people who are protesting be able to get out of jail before their court dates when they otherwise might not be able to. You can donate to community organizations. You can donate to political organizations who are lobbying to see change in communities in terms of policing, in terms of uh, socioeconomics. And again, I will leave some links to some resources for you guys to check out. My husband and I have donated 
hundreds of dollars to some of these organizations in the last month and it's because it's something that we believe in and so we are putting our charitable giving that we have available in our budget towards these issues that I think are really important right now. The next category is your time. And some of this I've already touched on. For instance, spend your time reading books by black authors, by authors of color. Be aware of what you're reading. If you are reading books that are all by white authors and you're telling yourself it's because of the genre that you read, you know, that's a problem. If you need recommendations in a genre, I mean, number one, you can Google them, but also I have plenty of recommendations on my channel in romance, in sci-fi and fantasy, in nonfiction, in other categories that are by Black authors and by other authors of color that you can read. I even have a video suggesting five romance books by Black authors and five Black booktubers who review romance, which I will link up above, and I have more videos in that series coming. So not just me, but there are plenty of other people as well out there who have recommendations. So regardless of what your genre of choice is, you can find books to read by non-white authors. Another way you can spend your time is by finding, following, and supporting Black creators, particularly creators who have energy that you really vibe with or who are reviewing books in genres that you are interested in. I think a lot of Black creators have said this recently and I'm going to echo them in that it helps no one if you follow them just for the sake of following them and then don't actually watch or engage with their content. That actually hurts them in analytics. If you're just subscribed to somebody and you don't actually like their content or don't care to watch it, it's more helpful if you just unsubscribe for them so that their content can get out to people who do want to watch it. But go and search for them and if you're not getting them suggested to you by the YouTube algorithm because, you know, structural racism, then go and look it up in YouTube. You can type in Black Booktube or Black Booktuber with a book that you like or a genre that you like and it will bring up some suggestions of videos that you can check out by different creators. So spend your time searching those people out, watching their videos, not clicking th skip through their ads because then they don't get the ad revenue, but use your time in that way. Comment if you can on their videos. Um, those are really practical ways that you can support Black creators in the bookish community. One other thing that I'm going to note here is do be aware of the way that colorism can affect this as well. There is a reason that often the largest Black creators are of lighter skin tones. And again, this is something that other Black creators have been talking about lately, and it's true, it's something to pay attention to, is you should ask yourself if you are not following any Black creators who are dark skinned, why that is because there are some really fantastic ones. Again, if you want to check out some of the people that I regularly recommend and have recommended even before this, um, there are some really, really great ones. Ashley from Bookish Realm, Steph from Steph's Romance Book Talk are, are a couple that come to mind who are dark skinned black booktubers who are great and wonderful and worth checking out. But that is another thing I think just to be self aware about because I think sometimes um, white people just don't notice that that is a thing that happens. But colorism is a real thing. And this happens among black people. This also, you know, I see this honestly as a mom of two mixed race boys. I see this happen where my younger child is a little more white passing than my older one. And even when he, they were like little, 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 I would have people making colorist comments about my children that pissed me off so much. So just, just like be aware of the fact that people tend to value lighter skin tones and lighter coloring and lighter eyes. Um, in ways that are really, really problematic and unhealthy. So yeah. And while you're reading books by Black authors, I will say that reading fiction is great, but you really also should build some nonfiction into your reading diet as a way of educating yourself. And you can listen to a lot of these books on audio. Some of them are really great and accessible that way. One recent book that I listened to that I would recommend is Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism, and You. It is a remix of Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi, which is brilliant, but a huge tome. And Stamped is much more accessible. It was remixed by Jason Reynolds. He does the audio book. It's not that long. You'll learn a lot from it. Other options that people have been talking about a lot are How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi, Between the World and Me by ta Coates, White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. There are many, many others, but those are some good places to start. And again, you can find more recommendations in many places. But do find some books that will educate you and will also help you to make long-term changes in yourself and in the people around you. 
And the final category that I want to talk about here is using your voice. And if you're thinking, hey, I'm going to click out of this because I am not a influencer, I don't have a YouTube channel, no, stay, this is for you too. We all have a voice. We all have a voice that we can use regardless of how large our platform is. And so please stay and listen because um, this is for everybody. Since we're talking about books, the first thing is those books by Black authors and authors of color that you've been reading, review them. Talk about them. Whether you're reviewing on Goodreads, you're reviewing on Instagram, you're reviewing on a blog, you're reviewing on YouTube, do it. Even if it's just shouting about it to your friends and family, be like, hey, I read this book, it's really great, you should check it out. Um, review and promote those books. And reviewing it on places like Amazon and Barnes and Noble is really, really helpful as well for boosting analytics, for getting those books noticeable in front of more people's eyes. Use whatever platform you have to speak up and to share content about things that matter, whether this is Twitter or Instagram or YouTube or your your Facebook with your friends and family, speak up, do not be silent. And I think this is a big problem is sometimes there are people who feel like, well, I don't know what to say, but that's okay too. It's okay if you don't have all the answers. It's okay to say, hey, this thing happened. It's wrong. It was murder. I believe that Black Lives Matter and I'm going to educate myself and I would encourage you to do the same as well. Even if that's all you you know how to say, um, you know, you're saying something and you're speaking up and you're not being silent because silence is complicity. You can speak up when you hear people saying racist things, whether they're making jokes or commentary that is racist or problematic, say something. Don't just be silent and let it pass by because it's uncomfortable or because it's awkward. Um, one recommendation that I've heard from some other friends is that when people try to make jokes that are racist or problematic, uh, you know, one way to do it is to say, oh, sorry, why is that funny? And see if they can explain it to you. And usually they'll kind of like get the point. Or you can use sarcasm. I've heard somebody say that they'll be like, oh yeah, super funny. Black people are dying. That's hilarious. So you can speak up and don't let it go unchecked say something. Um, silence is being complicit with this and it is a problem. And I get that it's uncomfortable. I get that it's hard to do. I have been challenging myself to push past things that I'm uncomfortable with as well, like posting kind of a long thing about my thoughts and feelings on what's going on on my personal Facebook page, which is peopled with a lot of very conservative and very religious people and some people who are very, very much disagree with what I believe and think to be true. But you know, what I'm seeing there is I am seeing people come out of the woodwork and start to speak up because it does matter. And I think you might be surprised at how many other people feel the same way and have just been afraid to speak. So you know what? It might be scary. It might be uncomfortable, but we have to do it anyway. Um, and this extends to talking to family members who are racist or who are being silent. And I will say that I did this. I reached out to some family members who had not spoken up about this and was like, hey, like, I'm disappointed that you haven't spoken up about this when I know that you're respected in your community. And you know what? They did. They were like, you're right. <laughs> we should be saying something. And, um, you know, that's hard to do with personal relationships. But you know, people are dying, people are being brutalized, and it's it's not okay. It's not okay to just stay silent and do nothing. And I think it's pretty messed up that it's taken this much for a lot of people to finally come to the realization of what's going on. I think for me, um, you know, I recognize that I'm white, I recognize that I have white privilege, and I am trying to use that privilege as a tool and as a shield. And, you know, this hits home for me, obviously, because my husband is black, my kids are biracial. And so I, I see the fact that this exists in everyday life. And I have been educating myself and been learning to get better and be more of an ally or be more of an accomplice in taking down racial inequality over years. So just know that this is not something that happens overnight. This is not something that changes overnight night, but it is something you can grow in. It's something that you can integrate into your daily life. And don't wear yourself out just tweeting on Twitter, but think about practical things that you can do. Okay. Other things you can do. You can vote. 
use your voting power if you are an American citizen or even if you're in other places where racism is an issue around the world, you can vote, you can speak out that way, you can get involved in local politics. And I think a lot of times local politics get looked over, but my husband and I have been talking about how maybe we could get more involved in it because the reality is, is that local politics does matter. Local politics is what determines funding for police. It's what determines their training. It's what determines a lot of things about the way that police are used in a community. And so so caring and speaking up, using your voice and using your time in your community can bring about change to these systemic issues. Another thing is if you are a parent, think about how you are teaching your children and what you are demonstrating to them. I think there have been some really good articles going around with opportunities for self-reflection, especially if you are a white person, in thinking things about like, what were the races of your closest friends at different ages in your childhood, in your adolescence, in your adulthood? What kinds of books are you personally buying and reading that your children see you buying and reading? What kinds of things are you saying around the household? What kinds of books are you buying for your children? How are you talking to them about race and about color? Because I'll tell you, if you are silent about it and you think you're teaching your children that color doesn't matter or color doesn't exist, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not. What you're teaching them is that it's not something that they should talk about because I will tell you they're noticing it. I will tell you they're picking up on it. Kids are like little sponges that absorb everything around them. And if you're not explicitly talking to them about equality, talking to them about anti-racist ideas, and I will try to leave some links down below as well for resources for parents. But if you're not explicitly talking about it, they're gathering these messages of the racism that is embedded in our community around us. Um, you know, I have two sons, my oldest is six, and I will tell you that we have had to actively combat colorist thinking as early as four. And not because we were saying anything in our household, but that wasn't enough. We had to actively start talking about the positives of brown skin and black skin and why it's beautiful and why God made us these different ways that are beautiful. You know, if you're not religious, you don't have to use God, but like for us, that's part of what it's been. And you know, in kindergarten, he came home saying, I wish that I had lighter skin like the other friends in my classroom because he is in a predominantly white school in a predominantly white area. And there are other kids of color in his class, but m most of the majority of them are white. And so having to talk to him through that at like five years old in kindergarten, like hell yes, your children are picking up on this stuff. They're noticing it and they notice your behavior. They notice the friends that you have. They notice the ways that you talk. They notice the things that you don't say. And so, you know, that's another place you have to really be intentional. If you want to raise anti-racist children, um, you have to be. Okay, the last thing I'm going to say, this is really for other creators and other influencers, is intentionally collaborate with black booktubers. And this is something that I want to be more intentional about as well is is actually purposefully reaching out to more people in the community to collaborate and to help bring more attention to their voices and to their channels so that hopefully people who maybe don't know that their channel exists because the algorithm has like racist things behind it, not intentionally, but structurally, that maybe that'll help bring people who might like them and like their content to their channel. Um, and then also, if you are working with brands, this is something that Naya from Naya Reads and Smiles talked about. And I was like, man, you're right. Like, if you are working with a brand, actively recommend black booktubers, including dark skinned black booktubers who might be good fits for working with them too. Um, use your voice, use your platform. And you know, with everything that I've talked about here, use your money, use your time, use your voice, stand up for what's right. And let's like make a change and make this world a better place for ourselves, for our children, for our grandchildren. Um, because it's it's been too long that this stuff has continued to go on and we need to end structural injustice, structural racism. And uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna end this. <laughs> there are people who don't wanna hear this. There are people who don't like it, who just wanna hear about books. Guys, you know what? Like everything is political on some level. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, so. I will leave links to lots of resources and people down below. Please make use of them. Check them out. Check out other people's videos who are also talking about this right now. Yeah. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.